Casino. Hey, whoa now. Hey, you know Eric's not here this morning? Shocker. His hey, belt uh, is, though. <clears throat> his tool belt's here? <laughs> he probably was hoping somebody would steal it. Uh, I'm supposed to do the introduction, you know? Oh. I can't remember how he does it. Like, oh, uh, hey, it's another day on the mountain, you know? Perfect. Yeah, do it. Um, yeah. Something like, oh, here, there's the oh. ski resort. Yeah, ski resort. Ski resort. Woo. Stopping at Lowe's today. This is where my horn went off. My horn's going to blast for five minutes. <laughs> All right. I think I got it. No, I think. I think, I think you nailed it, bro. No, I think I got it. it. I got gonna, it all wrapped up in I'm going to go for it here in just a minute. It's another day on the mountain here. Let's hit it. Ice. Sticking out of the hose here. That's not good. I'm starting to put on this counter flashing. I'm going to try to describe the details of this, although I'm sure I'll forget some things. But anyway, I have some necessary tools here. I've got some Lexel in the caulk tube, my drill, and a left and a right pair of snips. And I'm using these ones that have a serrated uh, jaw in them because this metal is really tough. It's steel and the smooth jaws just seem to, it just slips right out. So these really grab and bite and have a really good gear ratio or whatever to cut this thick steel. One of the first things I'm doing is getting this lap joint here where two pieces overlap. And since this is so thick and they're made to identical sizes, they don't really overlap that well. They just want to kind of pooch out. So what I did here, and I'm going to try to get close. What I did here is I actually cut the bottom edge off of a piece, including the hem, which, well, it's right there. And I spread open the hem on this other piece a little. You can see that little white part there. So that it will actually slide in and engage on that little um, piece of the hemmed area. And you can see they fit up nice and tight. And that little uh, recessed area makes it happen. That's what it's all about here. So otherwise I would have two hemmed areas uh, folded over each other and that would make a big bulge in the metal, like four layers. So this is gonna be real nice. That's gonna be my method for all the butt joints. The reason I'm using screws to put this on is so that I can take pieces on and off without having to pull nails. I, for example, on this overlap piece, I had to loosen the screws on this side to pull the piece away from the wall enough to where I could cut that bottom edge off and put it back without, you know, having to make a big mess, bending the metal, trying to pull nails. The screws work out good. These are really flat headed screws. They're actually made for uh, cement board. They're cement backer board screws. Let's have a look here from this outside corner. There's my straight run put in. I kind of have it notched and wrapped around the corner up here, but not down here, because Uncle Larry said, don't do that. And the way it's gonna work here, I have this piece made. Got a little end cap to go up here, and uh, I kind of chiseled out the siding to let that get all back in there. And it is wrapped on here on the corner board because that's going to get a corner board nailed on it here in just a minute. Down here, this is going to run long and Larry is going to cut and fold this over later on. So for now, so you actually need to be able to slide metal in from underneath and slide it up behind this. So that's why this is open ended and then it'll get folded in, taken care of later. Okay, we're going to bed that in to the stuff there okay i mean as far as i can tell that's it i mean i don't know what else to do you know you gotta think like water you know what what would water it's like you know when you're trying to hunt a squirrel you have to think like a squirrel yeah what would a squirrel do well, i've never hunted a squirrel actually but okay okay now this guy I need to screw that one in too, but that's a double layer. That's a double. I don't know if this can work here. Double. Here this, uh, Careful, it's gonna be sharp. yeah, nice razor sharp edge there for me to uh, swipe my finger across. But I'll tell you what, I am quite happy with that. Here's a look at the corner here. 
before we put the corner board on. Now it's good to go. And yeah, I'm gonna zip tape that. Don't worry about it. Corner board is nailed on. You can see I left a gap under the corner board and you can see the bottom of it sealed. And that pin line there is gonna be the bottom of the siding. So we don't want our siding material to touch the top of this flashing because then it could get wet and wick water up into the end of the uh, boards. So it's really critical to leave that gap. We're having a little debate about what to do next because we have to move our walk board up to get to the very top of the peak here. And it is really difficult actually to move these heavy walk boards when they're up high and it's cold and everything's frozen or whatever. But actually on the other side of the house, it's, it's pretty warm right now. And uh, it's like 45 degrees. We thought about painting a little bit of the top and then we could just take that walk board down completely and set it up over here. If we did that, then this walk board could stay right where it is. And we're just trying to think what is worse, you know? Is it worse? <laughs> I don't know. We're, we haven't figured it out yet, but that's what we're thinking about. There we go, we're topped out, ready for lunch. Well, I say topped out. We're topped out on that walk board, we gotta set up again. This is kind of crazy, but we've had air uh, compressor problems because it keeps tripping the GFI on our temporary power pole. And uh, we have hoses running all over the place. I mean, literally all the way around the house here. And um, I think it's because some of my old power cables have bad cuts and stuff in the insulation on the wiring. I don't know, can't figure it out, but now, Oh yeah, super nice, it's tropical cool. almost. So now we're running a hose all the way around. Yeah, I know I could run it the other way, but it was all frozen to the ground, so. And the little baby air compressor is chilling right by the pole, plugged straight in. So hopefully that will alleviate the problem there. You know, the first thing when you get a new bottle of hot sauce, you gotta do, they got this restrictor valve on here. See, I don't know what's the deal with that. Get rid of that, okay? It's like a safety, now it's you can, a safety piece. Now you can get some hot sauce because I don't know what, it would take you all day. This is only like two servings, I think. <laughs> Yo, Ray, how's that spaghetti treating you? Good, uh, it's been sitting in my truck or car since last weekend. Right? Because, uh, you know, we ate Bojangles on Friday instead, so. It's no big deal, right? Nah. I'm here, what did I miss? Everything like always. Yeah. Nothing good. Well, my physical went well. Right. I said I'm 6'2", 3% body fat, resting heart rate of 40. Uh, how old are you again? You're joking me, right? 39. I'm 5, 10, 39, 20% body weight. And I get out of breath walking up a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys do the video thing this morning? Uh, crap. Well, uh, I knew we were supposed to do something. Uh-oh. We worked. <laughs> that is work. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to paint this side right here because it's nice and hot and sunny right now over here. And I need those walk boards. That's really the problem. All right, I'm on it. Those walk boards. I got the paint. I'm doing it. I'm going. Right now. Jay borrowed my gear and went skiing yesterday. How you feeling? It was today? awesome. Oh, yeah. good. A little sore, but it wasn't bad. But yeah, I can't thank you enough, man. It was sweet. Helmets and all. Safety first. Safety first. Hey, uh, you got a soldering set, don't you? Yep, that doesn't mean nothing. That's my kid's <laughs> RC car <laughs> charger. Yep. Uncle Jamie. Yeah, I'll fix it. You're a good uncle. Uncle Jamie, wow. Oh, yeah. Uncle Jamie. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for the kids, all right? Yeah. I'll do it for the kids. Because <laughs> I love like, them. i not going to do that crap. Uncle Jamie. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> right. It is actually warm today for the first time in a while. So I'm going to get up here. We're going to do this painting. And yes, we actually do our own painting. It actually saves a lot of money. Painters are usually very expensive in this area to get. I don't mind doing it. We have everything set up that we need to do it so we can kind of pay ourselves to do the painting. So I'm gonna get up here, paint this one coat. It's gonna have to dry for a couple hours and it's warm and in the sun. I'm gonna get up there and second coat it. And then I'm gonna come down and hopefully no one will ever go up there again except the electrician because there's one light fixture up there. If you end up liking this color, it's from Sherwin-Williams, a color called Nuance. It's off-white. I picked up a new paint shield, and that's what it makes it possible to, you know, spray up close to the soffit and stuff like that. There's my old one. 
and it's gotten a lot of good use. And, uh, you know, without a spray shield like this, I wouldn't dare spray near a window or soffit. But with this, you can actually cut it in pretty tight. Don't want any white paint. Yeah. So we are moving, like, especially black vehicles away from the paint. Uh, we could get a little overspray drifting. It's, it's not windy, but, you know, there's a slight breeze you can see right there. And so that's one thing you always want to do. So I'm going to go up there and spray. Ray's going to come with me and edge with a brush, which I hope will be in here. Yep. So we have a, a toolbox that's full of paint stuff. Yeah. And um, this is my favorite brush that's, right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a cheap brush. Uh, so this is, we, we do our own painting. So we have tons and tons of painting stuff. We like to keep it in a toolbox just like everything else so that we don't lose it mainly. And we know it's all together and in one place. Makes Ray real happy, I think. Mm. Look at those. <laughs> those are nice. I'm excited. This has been a long time coming to get up here. We're using the guard here. You can see I'm just jamming it in so that I don't hit the soffit. I'm going to have to do a brush at the very peak, but basically, I've got this turned down pretty low pressure. And basically, able to edge right in there, uh, save ourselves a lot of time. I hope. You can go crazy here. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm totally a pro painter. I've painted a lot of houses though. And one thing that's really important that I'm doing here is getting the underside of all these boards because it's not pre-painted, it is primed. But uh, you know, that's why I'm kind of spraying up and that's why I need the shield. So I don't spray up and hit these soffits. So there's one half. You'll notice I'm not really like back rolling or brushing. I'm sort of painting this house like you paint a car which is very carefully and with a controlled amount going on each space. Uh, I've used a sprayer like a lot, so I wouldn't really recommend going for that method unless you're pretty experienced with the trigger feel and feel like you can sort of lay it on there evenly. Our roof is covered again. We're really trying to get a roof on this thing like next week, so this is a problem. We, we just keep getting snow over and over. I'm gonna leave it this time. to look like a farmhouse now that it's got white paint going on a couple notes here ray is you know hitting some of the heavy spots with a brush feathering them out and what's really allowing us to mostly just spray though is the fact we're using flat paint uh you know these old farmhouses you see don't look shiny because it's old paint on old wood siding so we don't want this thing to look like shiny when it's done so we're using flat paint and white doesn't fade very easily so we're okay with using white uh, because there's it's already white it can't really fade anymore and the second thing is it is wood grain siding so it's not a smooth surface so that is also allowing us to just kind of not be as meticulous about the paint coverage being 100 percent equal everywhere and it's still looking great and covering great I guess it's hard to make painting like exciting on video. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's mean, a big step you know, of the process. Most things in life are like that when it's really exciting, you know, and then you go to film and it's like, I <laughs> wasn't excited. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know why Eric keeps cutting me off. I'll let you say the whole thing. Okay? I don't believe you. <laughs> I really don't. Let's talk about flashing. <laughs> We're doing this counter flashing, okay? And there's a lot of components that are involved with this standing seam roof, especially compared to a standard ribbed metal roof with uh, exposed fasteners. The standing seam roof has many components. I'll start to list a few of them. Of course, you have the panel. You have your rake uh, molding that goes on the gable end. You have your eave drip molding that is basically the drip edge. You also have these pieces called Z-bars that help lock in other components like the wall flashing and the ridge. And also you have a special kind of Z-bar in the valley along with the valley flashing or the valley pan. And you have special tape, it's called butyl tape that helps to seal seams out on the surface of a panel. You also have color matched rivets that uh, allow you to attach metal to metal without any um, if fasteners basically and a couple other things we might have to put a snow guard here so that snow and ice doesn't just 
uh, go off the edge and peel the gutters off of the house. See, shingles, it's not a problem with shingles because the, the ice doesn't slide down shingles. But with the metal roof, it is a problem. Uh, let's see, what else? I don't know, that's about it. Clips. Clips. Well, this there's there are many kinds of standing seam roof. This particular kind has a nail slot or a uh, screw slot uh, milled into the edge of the uh, the piece where you fasten it that is hidden. So this has uh, slots. We're going to put special screws in, stainless steel so screws. The panel has tabs. Yeah, it's kind of got tabs built in. There are kinds that have a uh, a clip that allows the panel to kind of wiggle. You screw the clip on, and the clip holds the panel, and the panel can wiggle. Uh, but this one has slotted holes, so that's what we're going to do. Kind of like vinyl siding has. Uh, and this is a snap-down overlapping ridge kind of piece, so this does not require a special seaming tool or that, that crimping tool that you see. They're motorized, they run up and down the roof, and they actually squeeze the two parts together. This is not like that. This simply connects with a solid overlap in a snap kind of deal. You bop it on with a hammer, I think. If anyone was wondering... <laughs> <laughs> Why I cut Jamie off every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. That was two minutes. But that was a lot of information. It's going to make the video. Cool. Uh, actually, I'm not done yet. That was just the introduction. Right, yeah. That was just kind of like the pre-explanation. But um, uh, okay, he's going to cut me off. I knew it. I knew. On the topic of roofing, I know a question is going to be, do we do our own roofing? And probably for 10 years or 15 years, yes. We did all of our own roofing, mostly shingles. And then, I don't know, we just started hiring it out after that. We got tired of it. We got tired of it. Uh, it's, it's work for sure. In the summer, roofing is really rough because it's hot. And in the winter, roofing is really rough because it snows. So it's, it's only really a good job around here in the spring and fall. While I'm waiting for that top to dry, I'm gonna jump around and, and do the basement level. And I had a lot of questions about why does this look so weird? It's, it's because it was old siding, not old, but it was from the last job and it was painted dark gray. And then, so we didn't have to three coat it on site. We put one coat of primer. So that's why it looks really gnarly. Amazing. <laughs> it does look weird though. So no harm, no foul on those comments. more details on the paint if this were really dark paint we would have to back roll white is a really good color for not wanting to flash if you get paint heavier in one spot compared to another but darker colors tend to flash like by flash I mean sh look shinier so that's one good thing that's helping us and we're gonna do our own cleanup here so if I get a sprockle uh, paint sprockle here or there on some glass I'm the one cleaning it later and that's why I'm being super careful and super meticulous even though I'm not masking off most of the stuff while I'm doing it. I've done it a lot of times, even on my own house. I painted my own house one time just like this in about four hours all by myself with one ladder. And so you can really cover a lot of ground. And we're, we're doing two coats here, so just to be clear. Every once in a while when you're using a guard like this, it'll get some heavy buildup. So I'm just taking like another piece of metal that's smooth and sharp and just doing that, you know get the build up off. Uh, there's probably a lot of ways you could do that, but that seems to work for me. All right, we got this two coats and uh, now's the real work is getting this walk board down from here. And we're coming up with a plan currently on that. Flashing put up. Yeah. Got some siding put up. Yep. Got some painting. Yep. We, I was in the beard. Try to paint you with your beard. Uh, everybody always says you use that as a paintbrush. Yeah. Right well, anyway, how's Eric do this? Hey, it was another day on the mountain. Do 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 do. Thanks. For, um. Thanks. Uh, for doing something. We thanks. Uh, today, so. Thanks for watching the video. Yeah. It's thanks for building with us. Yeah. Oh. 
Man, it's so simple. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>